Hello, and welcome to the Procurement Game Changers podcast, brought to you by Consulting Quest. Ever wondered how the leaders get it done? What differentiates them from the rest of us? Let's tune in and learn from the best leaders in the procurement space. Let's do it. And now, over to your host, Helen Lafitte. to Procurement Game Changers, the podcast for procurement leaders that make a difference. Today, we'll be discussing how to build a sustainable supply chain. That's why I have the great pleasure of receiving Kartik Ear, a supply chain geek with more than 15 years of experience. His professional expertise spans every field of supply chain management, which includes, but is not restricted to, inventory handling, strategic planning, logistic, credit control, and a few more. He especially takes pride in his acumen for negotiations, including contract terms, pricing, and performance management. An exceptional communicator and much-loved leader, Kartik also dons the heart of a coach and motivational speaker. So, we'll glad to have you with us today. Welcome to the show, Kartik. Thank, thank you, Helen. Mm. So, Kartik, could you tell us what led you to procurement? Well, that's an interesting story, to be honest. Uh, in fact, uh, I still remember this was uh, my final year of my engineering and um, I, I was uh, being interviewed for a job position as a graduate engineering trainee and um, the interesting thing was uh, they basically asked me you know if I they had they basically gave me two options if I would like to be in technical or if I would like to be in procurement and the way I told them that that you know, I don't want to be in technical. So uh, then I started interviewing from my uh, procurement position. And the interesting thing was, uh, uh, this was the final interview with my with the vice president who was heading the procurement over there. And this is an automobile company. So everything was going absolutely fine. And uh, he he basically asked me, what, do I watch any sports? And I said, yes, of course I do watch cricket, football, and Formula One. He was really interested in Formula One. And he asked me, so do you remember uh, the last Grand Prix? I said, yeah, I think it was a Belgian Grand Prix. So this is back in 2000. Yes, thick, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, he asked me, so who won the Belgian Grand Prix? So I don't remember the name of the driver. I said, I guess it was driver A. So he said, no, it's driver B. Then I think we had like a small uh, discussion about it. And finally, I guess I, I was able to convince him that it was driver A. So, but as soon as my interview got over, I just got out and I didn't have, uh, we didn't have smartphones at that time. So I had to go home and check, you know, who the right on, who the winner was. And then I realized that, you know, it's driver B and I was wrong and uh, the head of procurement was right. At that time, I thought, you know, I've lost my job. But to my surprise, uh, about three months later, I uh, got and I mean, I got the offer letter. So, but the interesting thing is, as soon as I joined, uh, this was in back in 2007, the vice president called me to escape them. And uh, during our general introduction, he said, that, do you remember our interview? And I said, uh, yes, I do. And I apologized to him saying that, you know, that I'm sorry that I was wrong. And it was you who was right. But he said, you know, but one of the reasons we hired you was you were able to convince me, even though you were wrong. And that's the kind of conviction which we require in procurement. Not necessarily always that you're wrong, but generally the conviction which is uh, required to speak to the suppliers. And I believe that's how my procurement journey began. Yeah, that's funny. You got to stand your ground, as they say. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Let's uh, dive into today's topic. And um, yes. so every... A uh, supply chain and procurement leader wants to create an unbreakable supply chain, one that's reliable, resilient, and sustainable. So it's easier said than done, obviously. Uh, uh, and the truth is that we can no longer afford to ignore the damaging effect global supply chains have had on the planet, and it's time for us to take action. So if you think yes. building a sustainable supply chain is challenging and want to learn for those who that got there, there you're in the right place. Today, we will dive into practical advice for constructing a sustainable supply chain. So buckle up, it's time for your journey through practical advice from an industry pro. So let's get started with the basic. How would you define a sustainable supply chain? A sustainable supply chain is something in a way where you start with something, 
because you know what i believe is every country uh, is in a different maturity curve um, across uh, across the globe because some some countries are much far ahead some countries are behind but i think the most important thing is to understand to to have a vision that you know you have to be sustainable specifically with in the remote supply chain so you need to start with a vision and then start with one block at a time you cannot expect things to change overnight and specifically if you're looking at the indian region and the subcontinent region uh, we're still quite far behind uh, with reference to uh, sustainability i would say about 70% of india's needs is still or india's energy is still driven by coal and fossil fuels but slowly the the country has a vision to change the country wants to be carbon neutral uh, by 2070 and uh, so it means that there are a lot of projects you know which are coming along so at the same time you know it's it's quite important that uh, you take advantage of these situations uh, you start building a base you start educating the suppliers you start educating your customers in and around you because at this point of time where we are sustainability comes at a cost it doesn't come cheap it's mm-hmm. only you know with uh, the volumes and scales which will come in the future uh, you will see sustainability or the greener energies uh, i mean getting more pocket friendly but at some point of time you know the bigger organizations need to take a step ahead they need to uh, take a stance saying that it's fine that uh, they are they are okay to pay uh, more this is this goes to all the organizations across india or across uh, other developing nations it's only you know when they when these when the bigger organizations see a future i mean they start believing in it's the it's the tier it's the the strategic suppliers tier 1 suppliers and tier 2 suppliers you know they will also start believing in so you need to you need to make a start and yeah. i believe that you know a lot of big companies have already started making the start so this is where i believe it it's going to start and i uh, think i'm quite uh, looking forward for the future and i genuinely believe that you know we are in the uh, as a country we are in the right way uh, towards sustainability so it's it's interesting you mentioned that okay each country has its own um, level of maturity and you can only uh, assess where you start and where you want to go and that's kind of the way of moving forward why is it so important why is it important because just assume you know i think um, i mean just 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 i'll give an example for europe i mean so uh, europe has been quite far with reference to the entire sustainability effort that the infrastructure uh, is available or at least uh, the companies or the governments are aiding in helping the infrastructure made available majority of the i mean of europe's needs as on today is coming from gas or it's it's nuclear power which is comparatively less polluting the way towards sustainability i would say i think way towards green and energy is uh, i mean you move from say fossil fuel or say oil to gas gas is the biggest transition uh towards sustainable energies and hence you know they have already started making the transition but uh, i mean specifically if you look at uh, i mean countries like india i think they're still a bit far ahead and you also need to take into consideration the history i mean india is a huge country i would say i mean in terms of land mass or in terms of complexities languages is as big as europe even if you look at the history i think uh, specifically european countries and mostly the western european countries have started making this development 20 30 years before and so you know i think they are much ahead in terms of the curve and if they want to be carbon neutral maybe in 2030 or 2040 it is practically not possible over here and second thing you also need to take into consideration uh, the the purchasing parity of the country uh, where most of the european countries if average anywhere between i would say 40 to 50000 dollars and india stands at 2000 to 3000 dollars looking at the share population so it's very important that of course you know you need to first cater to the basic requirements and then you move ahead uh, towards a sustainable journey but as i mentioned it's extremely important to start it start the journey yeah we, it, it's it's interesting that you're saying that it's it's true that in europe um you know the the fast growing period is behind us and and we have consumed quite a lot of coal and <laughs> and you know 
uh, fossil fuels at the time. And uh, so it's much easier to reduce and optimize when uh, you know, you're already at a cruise speed, I would say. Even some would say that yes. you're declining. Uh, much more difficult when you're building a country and, and, and still improving the level of, of life of, of individuals and, and trying to, to make that um, harmonized among a, such a huge country. And you were saying it's bigger, it's a, as big as Europe, maybe, but you're three times as much as Europeans. So we're only four, 400 or 500 million people. Yes. So that's kind of a, quite a challenge. So the why is important is I think obviously we've talked a lot about it in recent, uh, you know, communications. There is uh, in Asia, in particular, there were some major disasters linked probably to climate change, and and we'll see things coming uh, th that uh, more and more often in in every parts of the world. And of course, I think that it's it's important in that sense that we need to find another way to do it. But each country has to find its way that is not compromising its growth at the same yes. time. That's why it's so hard, I think, in particular in, in emerging countries. So we, we discussed about that. Obviously, it's important. Each country has its own way and structures and ambitions. Now, if we look at a company that wants to be, uh, you know, to lead the way, as you were mentioning at the beginning, the big companies should lead the way and show how it's done and so on. What are the key elements that they need to put in place to achieve a sustainable supply chain? Uh, first is a vision that, uh, and it's extremely important that, you know, the company has the vision to ensure that, you know, this wants to go in a specific path. Second thing is uh, look at the current possible solutions available in the market. As I said, in every country, you know, we'll have different kinds of solutions, different opportunities. At the same time, it's super important to understand what is available in the market and how could we leverage, how could these companies leverage these options? Uh, if you look at uh, India, you know, I mean, there, there is a possibility of uh, using, I mean, greed and energies. Uh, and I mean, certain certain parts of India provides uh, the, the electricity grid operators provides green green energy operations. So uh, maybe is it something uh, which the big companies could purchase? Second option possibly is you know there is a big rail network. I mean, which mainly runs on runs on electricity. Can these big companies use them to transport goods? Third possibility I would say is uh, uh, I mean especially I mean. Even the big Indian MNCs, uh, or I mean, they they using electricity, which is generated by the electric operators. Can they possibly solarize uh, a certain part of, certain part of their consumption? Mm -hmm. How could we how could we reuse uh, the the materials you know which have been I mean produced by them? Can we recycle uh, the waste and, uh, and can we have a plan? Can we work with suppliers you know who are producing? I mean, who are actually providing these opportunities? This is this is one of the ways uh, the companies could explore. Mm -hmm. Second important thing is, I'm assuming that you know that the big multinationals across the globe they would be having a lot of experience working with the suppliers, you know, who have similar, uh, I mean, thoughts or similar vision or similar perspective on uh, being sustainable. So uh, the big companies needs to adapt. Or you know, learn from other countries or other regions, and try developing suppliers in the local market, and invest in these suppliers. Invest not necessarily has to be in, in terms of monetary value. Mm -hmm. When I say investments, it 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 is basically training the suppliers, giving visibility to the suppliers, and uh, I mean, giving them. I mean, taking them outside. You know, having. The global suppliers come and come and you know have meetings with them, having conferences with them, uh, providing some kind of assurances on the business part. You know, assume that you know, assume you you the supplier invests in these sorts. You know, maybe once I think once they attain a certain level of sustainability, maybe you know we can. I mean, the companies can sign future contracts with them that you know they will start working with them at a specific rate. And most important thing is uh, is uh, giving giving the society a confidence. That uh, or the suppliers of confidence that you know, I mean they are there to support them. At the same time, uh, I would say that it's it's also important that to understand what the government thinks, 
and uh, possibly you know work with the governments uh, to figure out uh, if certain sustainable actions could be put into action uh, put into uh, solution in 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 certain specific areas so that you know both the suppliers and the mncs could make use of them so these are some things you know which uh, on the and the standpoint uh, needs to be looked at but uh, one interesting thought about sustainability i would say even whether, whether it's in supply chain or procurement is also about it's not only about going green it's also about uh, ensuring that you have the right kind of uh, atmosphere made, made available this is in terms of the human resources this mm-hmm. is in terms of uh, whether the companies the local suppliers or uh, are uh, complying to the local conditions uh, ensuring that there are no child labors in 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 picture ensuring that you know everyone has uh, the i mean the right kind of atmosphere to work the safe atmosphere to work so as big companies um, i mean across any any nations they also need to figure out work with suppliers who have similar thought processes and push the the local community to ensure that you know i mean the the supply i mean the people who are working from them as a contractor as, or as a supplier you know have safe working conditions uh, are getting paid on time and getting the minimum wages they having the right amount of tools to work there is no hazardous or harmful atmosphere you know but because of this they are working so this is also i mean i would say uh, one part of sustainability which which needs to be looked into rather than just uh, only focusing on greener uh, no, no. greener energies absolutely so if i if i resume we have you need to have a vision of where you want to go you need to explore your option in the market in your local market to see what's happening you need to uh, uh work uh, with your suppliers and develop them you need to work with the local authorities to make sure that not only they will build what is next and and you can anticipate what they have in mind and then you have to work on the mindset this is kind of absolutely what you're so we talked about in particular this dev, uh, suppliers and and you you touched upon that a little bit but um how do you develop your suppliers who are Indeed, and, I, and I've been discussing with some of your, your colleagues based in India, the structure and company structure in India is different from what we can see in Europe with a lot of family businesses and small suppliers. How do you make them to take their part in sustainability at that point in their growth, in that point in their growing up as companies? Uh, it's important to start focusing. So you're, you're absolutely right. that you know in india uh it's a lot, it's a family owned business doing business is uh, very emotional i mean it's it there's an emotional question always uh, associated with the business so you have different generations of people you know in the business you've got someone you know who has close to about 40 years of experience you've got 20 years of experience you've got 10 years of experience and you also have a lot of people you know who i mean the second or the third generation who start just coming to the business and uh, i think these people have a different mindset because they look at the world differently i personally believe that you know every i mean if you if you move at every 5 year scale you know i mean you will see people looking at things much differently i mean i don't think a generation is 10 years anymore it's i believe i personally believe it's 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 a half a decade so you need to start working with the younger generation specifically on the supplier front uh, showing them the vision and uh, ensuring that you know because they are going to be the one maybe in, in the next 5 to 10 years actually taking care of the larger businesses so it's extremely important to take them into uh, i mean uh, i mean show them the vision and ensure that uh, they also start believing in the vision it's not on, it's i mean this is not uh, i mean i would say uh, i think as some people say that uh, i mean global warming is is a sham but it's it's a reality i mean at some point of time it's going to hit us I mean, if you don't if you don't start doing things differently and the younger generation are much aware about this so i personally believe that start investing in the next generation uh, of the same suppliers second thing is give them the tools and uh, i mean and the required ammunition uh, to start working on this specific part it could be different things as i said it could be training visibility it could be future uh, i mean i mean some assurances for future contract some basic investments 
Sometimes it's also important that bigger companies needs to invest um, in smaller companies or potential smaller companies so that, so they could work and collaborate together in the future. And uh, also at the same time, it's not only about investing in your suppliers, it's also about you know, also discussing with the peers of the same organization. Assume that, uh, I mean, if, if one company wants to bring a change and at the same time, the same similar kinds of companies wants to bring a change. So automatically when there is volume, when there is scale, so uh, the, the suppliers or at least the infrastructure or even the government you know, will start taking interest uh, the local bodies will start taking interest because uh, because they see the scale. They see that, you know, this is what the company wants. I mean, the bigger company wants. Mm -hmm. So that is something, you know, which you also need to start figuring out that how do you convince the your level of com uh, companies to start having a similar vision? You need to collaborate specifically in, in the world of, uh, I mean, sustainability. And you need to collaborate initially so that you create an atmosphere and you create a market and once the market is set and once the market start maturing, you can start competing with each other because now you have both players available in the market. Mm -hmm. So that is that is a second thought process which you need to figure out. And the third thing is, of course, as I as I specifically mentioned, that this is, there should be a big focus on the human side of sustainability also. Otherwise, uh, I mean, if if it's only going to be processes and on things on paper, and if you, if you ignore the human side at some point of time, because at the, at the end of the day, uh, the, com the companies are made by human beings. And if you, if you don't make the right atmosphere for the human beings or, and the right culture, right safety culture, uh, the, the pyramid will collapse at some point of time. No, it's true. And when you mentioned that, you know, younger generation are more uh, sensitive and, and aware of what's happening. I have three Gen Zs at home, so trust me. I know that I know about that between 14 and 20. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. I think that maybe one of the mistakes that we've been doing is to um either consider only the long term or only the short term, but sustainability is about long term, mid term and short term and uh, long term is obviously on their child shoulders and they're the ones who will be there. And if we get them on board and they're frustrated actually we see all those movements uh, worldwide and them uh, you know striking and not going to school because they feel like uh, you know politics and large corporations are listening to them i think this is uh important enough to to consider to take that into consideration and indeed uh you know count on them already to to be part of that movement i think that's a very smart move so you were saying uh so we we work with our suppliers we we uh we work with them in terms of you know uh um, developing them and then helping them, giving them tools. That means that procurement has a real role into that. So how do how does procurement contribute and help to that greater effort uh, practically? Procurement has a huge role because there's a big focus of sustainability towards procurement. And even globally, a lot of companies have a separate arm measuring sustainable procurement. So it's it's a different thing that, you know, I mean, what I'm saying uh, as a business that, you know, we need sustainable suppliers and all these things. As procurement, it is also a responsibility, you know, when when it's them, you know, who needs to actually start working with them and starting, I mean, doing the groundwork. And they have to do the work as grassroots level. That's the most difficult part. A lot of times what happens is that, uh, you work with 10 suppliers and only two or three of them could actually come up, but you won't know. I mean, you would have done the due diligence. Uh, you would have, you would have explored the markets. Uh, you would have, you would have got assurances for them, but something at some point of time, you know, uh, things fall in between chairs. So it's only when you work with say uh, 10 or 15 people or suppliers, maybe three or four of them and will actually come into the, come and, you know, start supporting you, but you won't know which who three or four of them. So there's a huge uh, effort which needs to be made by procurement um, at the initial stage. Second thing is um, convincing them. I mean, it's it's not an easy factor because see, it's easier for bigger organizations to come and tell them that you know, fine. Uh, I mean, we give you future contracts and we are ready to pay more, or the future come. But but it's at the same time, you know, if a company you know who has a turnover of assuming say ten million dollars. And they make an yearly uh, a profit of one million dollar. 
So the their first thought process is: Should we reinvest and make more money, or mm-hmm. should we invest this in sustainability? And I could possibly make money in the next five years. So I think the answer the answer is a no brainer. No? They would want first want to get to a certain level, but getting to a certain level, you know, people at some point of time because they want to see money on a shorter term. Sometimes you know they they lose the way and they really don't want to go the sustainability way. And uh, so it's there where where procurement plays a role to ensure that you know you give. I mean you you work with them. You you figure out a structure for them. There could be some possibility that you know you work with the business and do some investments with them, which will help them uh, grow better. This is this is where uh, sustainable. I mean, procurement plays a role. Last thing is uh, on the procurement side. Uh, I mean, they most of the companies what they do is they do a supplier segmentation, and the supplier segmentation you have uh, strategic suppliers, you have level one suppliers, you have level two suppliers. Uh, you also need to get, I mean, uh, some kind of knowledge sessions or some kind of thought sessions with them. That if they don't make the move today, it's basically it's it's a game of carrot and stick. So if you also need to tell them that in case you know if we do not move this, uh, I mean the sustainability way in five years time or in three years time, you know they will lose their contracts. Yeah. So it so there's you also need to put kind of uh, indirect pressure that you know this is the way the company is going. Either you do the investments now, or you know we work through it, or we will only move work with suppliers who will have a similar vision as the big companies do. So it's 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 not an easy thought process at this point, especially you know if coming from uh, a developing nation like India. But I still believe you know the vision is there, the thought is there, and but it's going to be a difficult a difficult journey. It's interesting. So I think it's time to wrap up and um, and to go to the takeaway. <laughs> so if there was <laughs> one thing that you would like our listener to remember for our conversation, what would that be? India is changing, and uh, and the thoughts are changing, and uh, the the mindset is changing. So it means that the supply chain and procurement is also changing. And I personally believe that it's changing towards the right direction. Mm-hmm. The world needs to be patient. And at the same time, world needs, I mean, so, and it also needs to be supportive. So uh, once, uh, the, I mean, we receive the support from the world, uh, I personally believe that, you know, at maybe five years, 10 years down the time, you know, India will have an extremely conducive infrastructure for sustainability. And there, there will be opportunities where, you know, where I personally believe that, um, I mean, in a few years time, you know, India could lead the way in terms of the sustainable procurement and supply chain. So this is, this would be my takeaway. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Curtis. That was extremely interesting. Thank you, Lynn. Hmm. So now it's your turn to tell us about your experiences and your challenges when building a sustainable supply chain. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified when a new episode is out. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if that's the case, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So happy sourcing to you all. Bye and au revoir. And that's a wrap for this episode of our Procurement Game Changers series but we'll soon be back with yet another exciting session with one of the movers and shakers from the procurement space. Meanwhile, remember to visit our website at consultingquest.com for more consulting updates and procurement know-how and join us on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Until then, goodbye from the entire Consulting Quest family. Have a great day.